What's up, future respiratory therapists? In this video, we're gonna talk about dead space. What is it and why is it important? Let's dive in. All right, so as I stated in this video, we're talking all about dead space. Before we jump into that, do me a favor, head over to Respiratory Coach Academy at respiratorycoach.com. Check out the TMC and the CSC Bootcamp, your resources to assist and aid you in successfully passing your TMC and your CSC credentialing exams on the first attempt. I would greatly appreciate that. Now let's talk about dead space. Now dead space is a uh, not a simple but a fundamental uh, theory or principle that we learn pretty early on in our respiratory care educational journey. And what we hear it talked a lot about is when we talk about comparing dead space to shunt. Now this video is all about dead space. So all we're gonna do is re-emphasize what dead space is and then what are a couple of different types of dead space in this short video. So to remind you, dead space is any situation where ventilation exceeds perfusion. Now that, that seems like, okay, what does that mean? Well, when we talk about ventilation, we're talking about gas movement. When we talk about perfusion, we're talking about blood flow. And what we understand is, is that for the oxygen that we breathe in to find its way into pulmonary circulation and out for um, uh, systemic circulation to provide oxygen for our tissues, we have to have an interface where the blood through the pulmonary capillaries is, uh, has a time, a point in time to interact with the ventilation that is happening within the alveolar units. And when they match, we have a good VQ ratio. When they become unmatched, when you have ventilation in areas that exceed or do not have perfusion, then what we have is what we call wasted ventilation. Okay, now we'll go to Egan's here. This is the 13th edition, chapter 11, uh, page 239. This is the ventilation uh, chapter. Again, fundamental theory, right? This book is somewhere around, I don't know, 1600 pages and dead space is first talked about on page 239. So Im important uh, principle here, right? And so here's what Egan says about dead space. There's two different types. There's anatomical and there's alveolar. When we talk about those, this is what we're going to see. Anatomical per Egan's is referred to as the volume of the conducting airways, including the nasopharynx and the oropharynx. It's called anatomical dead space. And you say, well, why is why are these airways referred to as anatomical dead space? Well, they're referred to anatomical dead space because we're, we, we have those, that's part of our anatomy, and that's part of the pulmonary system. We know to get air down to the alveolar units, this air has to travel through the conducting airways. Now what that means is, is that when I take a breath in, let's just imagine there's an oxygen molecule right here, and I'm gonna breathe in. That oxygen molecule, that gas that just entered my nasal pharynx, did not make its way to the alveolar units. It's still in my nasal pharynx, right? And there's gas still in my trachea, in my conducting airways, but there's no pulmonary gas flow to those areas that is going to allow for gas exchange to happen. So what that means is, is whatever that tidal volume I took in, the total amount, not all of it is going to reach the alveolar units where gas exchange is going to happen. Some of it is going to be wasted ventilation in my conducting airways that is not going to participate in gas exchange. So that's the key point here when we talk about anatomical dead space is we understand that everybody has it all the time. It can actually be estimated. Egan's talks about that too. Anatomical dead space is approximately one milliliter for every pound of ideal body weight. So if my ideal body weight's 170 pounds, then that means of every tidal volume that I take in, about 170 milliliters is not going to participate with gas exchange. So for example, if I take in a tidal volume of 470 milliliters, 
then only about 300 of that is going to make its way to the alveolar units where gas exchange is actually going to happen. This is what we get VD to VT, dead space to tidal volume ratio. And that's uh, what we're talking about when we talk about anatomical dead space. Now, anatomical dead space is, uh, like I said, normal. It's there. Everybody has it. When we move down from that, we talk about the second type of dead space that happens, which Egan's talks about in the very next paragraph. It talks about any gas that ventilates alveoli with no blood flow or reduced blood flow is also now referred to as dead space, but this time we're referring to it as alveolar dead space. See, this is a different thing. When the gas gets through the conducting airways and makes its way out to the alveolar units, we would expect blood flow to be there. We would expect gas exchange to happen because there's ventilation happening there and there's perfusion happening there. When those two meet, gas exchange happens. But you see now we've got areas within our alveolar units that are, that are uh, not being perfused that are or potentially being under perfused and the ventilation is still happening that creates a space or a time or a situation where ventilation exceeds perfusion aka dead space now Egan talks about this uh in regards to alveolar dead space usually related to to uh, defects in pulmonary circulation a common disease state example of such a defect is pulmonary embolism. So when you learn about your diseases and you learn about pneumonia, when you learn about pulmonary edema with CHF, and you learn about uh, asthma, and you learn about uh, tuberculosis, and you learn about all these other diseases, pneumothorax, pleural effusion, all of them, uh, you have to ask yourself what type of anatomical alteration happens and what does that effect have on VQ ratio? When we talk about pulmonary embolism, a disease that you have either already learned about or certainly will, we understand that what makes pulmonary embolism unique is that it is one of the rare and probably best cases of dead space, specifically alveolar dead space. Okay, now we take this one step further because I can't just leave you here hanging with, okay, I've heard of anatomical dead space. Um, I think one ml uh, per pound of ideal body weight, I get that. I understand alveolar dead space when I think about a pulmonary embolism, I get that. But sometimes I'm asked about physiological dead space. You see, physiological dead space is the sum total of all wasted ventilation. So when we talk about physiological dead space, it is not just anatomical, it is not just alveolar, but instead it is both of them together. Together that is what we refer to as physiological dead space, both anatomical and alveolar. Now, the formula we can use to calculate this, and if you're ever wondering, like, well, how would we know how much dead space we have? Uh, it would look something like this, and you're probably all very familiar with this formula. That is what we in the respiratory therapy community refer to as PACO, PICO, PACO. What it stands for and what it means is, is we take the difference between our arterial CO2 and our entitled CO2 and then divide that by our originally starting where we, we used up here, our arterial CO2, divide it by that and what we get is a percentage and that is our percentage of physiological dead space. So if that comes back and it says 60%, whatever numbers you put in here, then what that tells you is that 60% of your tidal volume is not participating with gas exchange. And we can see where that could be a problem, right? You start getting into 70, 80, 90%. You're not, you're not exchanging gas. You're probably going to have poor outcomes, specifically associated when you take a pulmonary embolism, increasing your alveolar dead space, in addition to your already established and baseline anatomical dead space, then you're going to have a large amount of physiological dead space when you put them together. And we need to be aware of that and know how to monitor that and how to take care of these patients and know what we're talking about when we hear the words physiological, anatomical, and alveolar dead space. Now there's another one. There's mechanical or instrumental dead space. We're going to talk about that in another video. But for now, 
Be sure you leave this video being very comfortable with what is anatomical, what is alveolar. When we add them together, we get physiological. I think I said that about four or five times already, if not seven or eight, because it's that important. And that's Dead Space. I'm Respiratory Coach. Stay here with me on YouTube. Come check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and LinkedIn. And then if you have any questions, any concerns, looking for more materials uh, to uh, aid you in your courses, or even with your credentialing exams, be sure to check out the website, respiratorycoach.com. I thank you for watching. Remember, average is easy. Don't be it.